beta-hydroxy butyrate ketone salts with glycerol should supply a good amount of energy because glycerol is a little bit of a metabolic intermediate between uh, glucose and fatty acids. And it brings us to optimizing fatty acid metabolism to improve your endurance and stamina, which obviously works better if you follow a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet, even if that's during the off season in a steep caloric surplus and fat intake is somewhat elevated beyond baseline in order to make a good amount of progress or any kind of fat loss diet where carbohydrate intake is somewhat restricted and you're relying on these fatty acids coming from adipose tissue. And to bring it back a little bit, the aforementioned carbohydrate metabolism optimizing compounds are obviously more practical during the off season when you're literally inhaling carbs all day long. Duh. So let's discuss the fatty acid metabolism optimizing compounds going forward. You can go with medium chain glycerolides, either oil or powdered, MCT, either pre-workout or intra-workout, uh, depending on what you prefer and how you digest that. Or you can look into beta-hydroxybutyrate salts, whether that's BHB sodium or BHB potassium, BHB magnesium and calcium. And it entirely depends on you. You have several formulations which just use one of these BHB salts or a combination thereof. You can buy both powdered MCT or powdered beta-hydroxybutyrate salts on iHerb. I've linked a couple recommendations down below in case you want to give those a try. I would say that MCT, whether that's oil or powder, is a little bit better for energy levels. And beta-hydroxybutyrate is mostly for focus because these are ketone salts and they mostly go to the brain where they help with cognitive benefits, obviously nootropic benefits, and it keeps you um, dialed in, laser focused, even during strenuous sets uh, when you're fully fat adapted. So go with either or, I would not combine both, but if you want to do a combination of both, that's entirely up to you. Let us know down below how you feel regarding the benefits of your endurance and stamina. And whether you go with median chain triglycerides or beta hydroxybutyrate ketone salts, you can mix both either or with glycerol, whether that's powdered glycerol coming from Hydro Prime or monosterate, glycerol powder or liquid glycerol, that's entirely up to you. Again, you can decide to go with pre-workout glycerol or intra-workout glycerol. And um, Gorilla Mind has Hydro Prime powdered glycerol as well as liquid glycerol. The details are on the screen. Then you can go with one scoop pre and one scoop intra if you do so prefer it. A combination of MCT and glycerol or beta hydroxy butyrate ketone salts with glycerol should supply a good amount of energy because glycerol is a little bit of a metabolic intermediate between uh, glucose and fatty acids. So you can take glycerol whether you follow a carbohydrate optimizing diet or a fatty acid optimizing diet with all of the compounds we're discussing. Now, if you go with beta-hydroxybutyrate ketone salts, then you obviously need to adapt and modify your electrolyte formula intra-workout or pre-workout a little bit because beta-hydroxybutyrate salts obviously contain, again, sodium, potassium, magnesium, or calcium, either separately or a combination thereof. So make sure you stay on top of your electrolytes. You can do what I did. In the past, you take one sachet of Gorilla Mind hydration pre-workout, which contains a good amount of electrolytes in the correct ratios. And then you take a beta-hydroxybutyrate ketone salts, a blend of the four different salts, in your workout, right? Because that helps with energy levels, mostly from a cognition perspective. So try a little bit of both. I feel that electrolyte formulas are very beneficial, whether that's a carbohydrates metabolism optimizing diet or a fatty acid optimizing metabolizing diet with the, all of the compounds that we're discussing. Um, so I would always add those in, especially if you sweat buckets, because if you sweat buckets in a gym without air conditioning or your workouts are longer lasting, then well, you obviously lose a boatload of electrolytes. You can look into supplemental carnitine, whether that's oral L-carnitine, L-tartrates, or oral acetyl L-carnitine, or my favorite, ejectable L-carnitine, whether that's in combination with an injectable methionine inositol choline blend to help with fatty acid mobilization from adipose tissue. I'll leave that entirely up to you. Carnitine helps with the absorption of medium chain and long chain triglycerides into the mitochondria. And when you're fully fat adapted, your requirement for carnitine, because your fatty acid intake is so high, and you might also be losing a good amount of fatty acids from adipose tissue. So the turnover of fatty acids is increased and thus your carnitine requirement increases as well, especially when you throw, well, the kitchen sink of fatty acid metabolism optimizing compounds at it. So I prefer a combination of injectable carnitine with injectable MIG blend, which are combined in several injectable pre-workout formulations. The details are on the screen. You can look at the Cardarine, aka GW501516, also known as Endurable. Cardarine is a PPAR Delta agonist, which helps with fatty acid metabolism and fatty acid oxidation within the mitochondria and skeletal muscle that's metabolically active 
very, very dramatically. Now, there's a lot of scientific evidence that shows that cardarene might cause cancer. And then there's also scientific evidence that shows that cardarene prevents cancer. So please watch the deep dive if you're interested in cardarene to optimize fatty acid metabolism, because a little bit of a warning is uh, in place, obviously. So watch the deep dive first and then decide if you want to run cardarene or not. You can look into SLUPP332, which helps with fatty acid oxidation and glucose uptake quite tremendously. So it actually helps with insulin sensitivity to a certain extent. I have a deep dive on that. Give it a watch. You can look into ICAR, which isn't really commonly used in the bodybuilding or fitness community. I haven't used it myself, and I don't really know anybody in the bodybuilding or fitness community who uses ICAR frequently. It's heavily used in the endurance sports, like cycling, for example, where it's very, very popular. So it's something worth looking into because it certainly works to boost your overall endurance and stamina, but I'm not entirely sure how much of an effect it might have on your strength performance. ICAR is an analog intermediate in the generation of adenosine monophosphate, which stimulates adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase activity, which is an enzyme that regulates cellular energy metabolism. And this leads to several effects, including increased glucose uptake. So ICAR is known to improve insulin sensitivity. A little bit of caution is advised when you combine ICAR with insulin and perhaps mildronate. Obviously, that's why you included it in this section but it mostly enhances fatty acid metabolism and stimulates mitochondrial biogenesis. As a side effect or beneficial side effect, ICAR stimulates angiogenesis and a combination potentially of ICAR with a TB500 or BBC157 or uh, growth hormone to a certain extent, or cerebralisin even, which increases vascular and endothelial growth factor concentrations, all contributing to angiogenesis through different pathways. If you want to improve your endurance by increasing blood flow to very highly metabolically active tissues, if you take ICAR frequently, you create new blood flow with oxygen-rich and nutrient-rich blood, also allowing for more CO2 removal um, through the lungs eventually. Um, consider combina combining that with carnosine or sodium bicarbonate, aka baking soda. All right, we're getting to the optimizations already. So ICAR has uh, benefits through multiple different pathways, but it also means that ICAR has a good amount of potential drug interactions. So personally, I would not combine ICAR with diisopropylamine dichloroacetate, abbreviated to data, or injectable adenosine triphosphate or adenosine monophosphate, for example, because if you start manipulating all of this ATP synthesis and AMP generation, then you might go hypotensive downstream and then the drug interaction makes you uh, hyperventilate on the floor and that's not what we're after here we're trying to improve our endurance and stamina right so a little bit of caution is advised i don't have any personal experience with icar so please do additional research if you're thinking about adding icar to your fatty acid metabolism optimizing compound stack and these following lipolytic compounds i would only consider during a cutting phase when caloric intake is restricted and you want to get lean by promoting the release of fatty acids from adipose tissue and that includes growth hormone anti-obesity drug 9604 which is a modified version of human growth hormone fragment 176 to 191 and you can go with either or both are basically a small segments of bioidentical growth hormone albeit that aod 9604 is somewhat modified that acts on the growth hormone receptor and initiates lipolysis and no other uh, side effects regarding insulin sensitivity uh, through that particular pathway. So either go with growth hormone or AOD 9604 or HH frag, um, whatever you prefer. And then you can look at the solbutamol and mirabicron, which I discussed at length in the mirabicron deep dive. If you haven't given that a watch, give it a watch now or when you're done with this video. I prefer not to use clenbuterol anymore during a cutting phase because it stimulates my heart rate way too much to the point. It starts to affect my endurance and stamina, even though the central nervous system stimulation might enhance my strength overall. So I prefer a low dose, a combination of solbutamol with mirabicron. Solbutamol works on a beta 2 receptors and mirabicron works on the beta-3 receptors, so there's no overlap here, assuming that you keep the dose low and moderate for its beneficial effects. Salbutamol is available as an inhalable, oral, and injectable, which you can find in various injectable pre-workout formulations, and mirabicron is only found as an oral medication for a bladder incontinence, right? So by activating the beta-3 adrenergic receptors, not only do you relax the bladder, but you also stimulate a good amount of lipolysis from adipose tissue. And then the salbutamol stimulates lipolysis to the beta-2 adrenergic receptors and has a beneficial effect regarding bronchodilation in the lungs. I mean, salbutamol is an asthma medication after all. So by allowing you to inhale more oxygen, especially if you combine that with nasal strips, 
or methylene blue or some of the other things that we're discussing here, the oxygenation of tissue is so enhanced that you can literally uh, take a couple breaths, hold your breaths, and then breathe through your sets. It's, it's very dramatic. Honestly, those particular drug combinations, very dramatic regarding oxygenation because all of the oxygen can go through your open nose using nasal strips into your lungs, which are also open from sulbutamol. And then uh, the oxygen delivery to tissues is completely optimized because your hematocrit and red blood cell count is basically borderline high. Yeah, stamina galore. I will tell you that.